Hi, my name is Daniela, and today I'll be reading an extract from a story taken from the book Asborn Illustrated Myths from Around the World. The story I'm going to read is called The Greedy Frog. When at last the lake was completely drained dry, Tidalek was so big and bloated he could barely breathe. The other animals looked at him with a mixture of fear and anger. Only the crocodile, seemingly unconcerned by the frog's greed, continued to lay in the sun. Look at what you did, yelled the platypus. Give us back our water. But Tidalek was not done. So thirsty, he croaked. Looking around for more, in the distance he spotted a long, winding river, sparkling as it snaked across the plain. Without a moment's hesitation, he set off for it, bouncing and rolling all the way. The animals chased after him, shouting as they went. When Tidalek reached the river, he opened his mouth wider than ever before and began slurping up the water from the river. This time, his gods were so powerful, they sucked in water from all across the land. With each mouthful, a lake shrank or a stream dwindled until they were devoured altogether by the thirsty frog. When he was done, not even a puddle remained. Tidalik was now bigger than a hill, and still he wasn't happy. I want more, he said. There is no more, the platypus called from below. You've taken it all. And this time you gave it back, Tidalik scoffed. Why should I? If you wanted this water so badly, maybe you should have drunk it first. But you didn't. No, leave me alone. The frog let out a massive yawn. I want another nap. Oh, no, you don't, the platypus shouted. You give us back our water right now, or else... On hearing the platypus threat, Tidalik began to smile. Compared to Tidalik, the platypus was tiny. What could a tiny platypus do to a giant frog? Thought was enough to make him laugh. But the moment he did, his belly tightened, causing a fountain of water to erupt from his mouth. At once, the frog clamped his mouth shut, refusing to let out any more. Aha, said the platypus, watching water trickle down the frog's chin onto his swollen belly. Now I know just how to get our water back. He turned to the others and began whispering his plan. When he was done, the spiny echidna took a step forward. Give us back our water, you greedy frog, she squeaked. But the frog just snorted and rolled his eyes. So be it, she said and rolled up into a ball. Tidalik smirked. You won't be able to pop me with your sharp spines, he said, matter-of-factly. But instead, the echidna rolled onto her back and then unfolded into the most bizarre pose. Her long tongue was lolling out of her mouth. Her legs were stretched wide in all directions and she was singing a song in the silliest voice. At first, the frog thought the echidna was crazy. Then he spotted an owl twirling around and around on his feet until he was so dizzy, he fell over. Alongside him was a koala, juggling mice so badly that most of the time they landed on her face and had to run down her shoulders and along her arms back into her hands in order to be juggled again. The frog suppressed a giggle. It was all so ridiculous. Tidalik watched as the platypus started quacking like a duck and the duck started growling like a tiger quoll. Even the lazy crocodile was dancing upright on his back legs. The frog felt his stomach groan and clamped his mouth tight shut. Beads of sweat were running down his face as he struggled not to laugh. Then came the eel. She stood up on her tail and began waggling to and fro, tying herself in a series of knots. By mistake, she wove herself into such a tight knot that she couldn't get out of it again. She wriggled around on the floor, calling for help. That was far more than Tidalik could cope with. His belly let out a great grumbling sound, louder than thunder, 
and a torrent of water exploded from his mouth. So do you think Tidalik managed to give back the water to the animals? And what lesson do we learn from this story? <laughs>